He has put into my trust, meaning that he has left me in care of preaching his word. I believe that I am committed to preach the word of God. I am committed to read God's word. I am committed to study God's word. I am committed to, to accept it as it is. It's not my job to try to twist this word into something in which I would like for it to say, but I must preach it as it is and as God has given it to us to preach. I hear many people get up today and I understand that there are many different styles of preaching and, and I could go down the list tonight of how many different kind of styles of preaching there is and there's none of them that is wrong as long as God's word is involved. God's word is the base and Jesus Christ and the cross and Calvary is the finish line to the message. And I'm here to tell you tonight uh, that the type preaching in which I am committed to is to preach the word of God uh, and try to give it to the best of my ability and give it to you as God gave it. That's why sometimes something I may preach, uh, it may, it may just may, Prick your heart with conviction. Why? Because God's word is meant to do that. Yes, God's word is to teach us things. And we ought to teach. The Bible says that a preacher is, uh, is out, uh, uh, should be able to teach the word of God. And think, man, God's word. I believe what's happening in America today and what's happening in other parts of this world today. Uh, folks, as people is starved to death for the word of God. Uh, some people has ate so much of God's word, has heard it preached for so long. Uh, yes, they've gotten founded on the word of God. And they've closed their ears to the word of God. Uh, oh, we need a good groundbreaking of God's word. Uh, I'm talking about breaking up the hard ground uh, uh, that has been has been sold over. You know, they say that you go out every year and you plant a garden and you take your tiller out there or you take your har out there and you only go a certain depth uh, year after year after year. What happens after a time uh, when you just go that certain depth? Uh, what's below that will can begin to get packed hard. Uh, and when water goes into the soil, it'll only go through that fir first layer in which you have tillered and plowed. Uh, and then it cannot go any further. Why? Because the ground has gotten too hard. Uh, I'm afraid that many men today their lives have gotten so hard uh, uh, from the preaching of God's word. Uh, oh, yes, they'll take it uh, in as it's being preached, uh, but that's about as far as it'll ever go. It never gets to the heart uh, where it preached the heart, uh, convicts the heart, uh, convicts the lives. Uh, we need some preaching to go on that'll just dig deeper down in the ground and turn the ground up for a change and just plow our ground up, amen. Why? So that we can grow a little more for Jesus Christ. Oh, if we ever get to the point where we can't grow and our root systems can't go down, but they just spread out. Uh, folks, we can be like the old red oaks uh, that are in the woods today. When the violent storm comes its way and the wind begins to blow and it gets a little top heavy, it'll fall quicker than anything else. Why? Because its roots don't go down. They go out. Uh, we need to be like the old oak trees uh, that's been sitting there for years and years and years. Why? Because their roots have dug deep uh, into the earth. Uh, we need to be like the palm trees uh, that's down on the coast. You say, well, man, they can't go too deep there. It's nothing but sand. Listen, a palm tree, a uh, tap root, it'll keep digging down into the sand until it finds a rock. Uh, if it has to go uh, for several, several hundred feet down, it'll go until it finds a rock uh, and it'll wrap its tap root around that rock and it'll hold on to that rock. Uh, so when the storm uh, comes its way, it may bend over, it may lose its leaves, uh, but it'll never die. Why? Because it's anchored to the rock. Uh, folks, we need that kind of preaching. We're to plow the ground up in our lives to where we'll dig a little deeper and get a hold of God and stand sure in our lives. Can I go on and say that I, God has committed the, the gospel my, uh, to my trust uh, and I am committed to share it uh, and to live by it to the best of my ability. He has enabled me uh, or he has given me the power uh, uh, physically and mentally and morally to do what must need to be done with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You wonder why 
I get so excited about preaching. Why I get so so beside myself when I preach. Uh, folks, I'm telling you, I'm telling you something, uh, and I'm sharing something with you uh, that comes straight from God's own mouth uh, that came from heaven above, uh, and it's printed right here in black and white and sometime in red letter edition. Folks, it's the Word of God. Uh, we ought to get excited about it. If I got up here and act like I didn't care and act like I didn't get excited about it, uh, how can I ever expect you to get excited how can I ever expect it to help you and get you on fire for God, amen? Oh, I'm telling you, he has strengthened me with the gospel that I may live for him, and he has counted me faithful by putting me into the ministry. So therefore, I echo the words of Apostle Paul tonight and say, I am committed. God didn't see fit call me and put me in the ministry. If God didn't see fit uh, and didn't think I was faithful enough and that I was worthy enough to pastor Royal Creek Baptist Church, uh, folks, my name and my thought, uh, your, uh, the thought of you and uh, me, me on your mind, uh, it would have never stayed. Uh, it would have left uh, and there would have been nothing to it. Why? Because it wouldn't have been of God's will. But God saw fit uh, to put it in your heart uh, and put it in my heart uh, to put us together for a long haul, amen, amen, so that we may get something done for God. Amen. Oh, I'm going to tell you, if I came in here in the first year we ran out of the banks, you know what? It wasn't lasted long. Hear me out now. When the storms come and the creeks do rise as they have before, and I've watched everybody this late past weekend, people's getting ready for what could have come if the creek did get up over its banks, and it began to flood the valley. Listen, folks, it wouldn't have been long. It would have receded down and went back to its normal. And everything would have continued on as it ever was. Folks, I pray that God not let it be a face rising creek here at Rowan Creek in our church. But God will let the waters rise a little at a time until we get out of the banks. Never to return back to where we were, but to keep pressing on for God. I am committed to see that happen. Amen. So that means I'm committed to pray. I'm committed to prayer life. I'm going to stay on my knees a little longer. I'm going to pray a little harder. I'm going to seek God's face a little more. Why? Because I want to see God move. I want to see God do something, uh, and not only in your hearts and lives, uh, but in other people's hearts and lives, and see them come into the house of God. I believe it can happen. Oh, if we ever get to the point where we don't believe it's going to happen, it won't happen. I stopped, uh, I was thinking, and folks, I'm going to be honest, God gave me this message three weeks ago. God just now gave me permission to preach it. And I've been gnawing at the bit, waiting. And I could. I was sitting there today, I was preaching a little Ike, and I was telling him, I said, son, this is what's going to happen tonight. I was telling him, he didn't care. He didn't have a care in this world. But you know what? Uh, hey, I was anxious to get here and to tell you that I'm committed to, and I'm going to commit to my prayer list because I want to see something happen. And I believe God can do it. But you know, I got to thinking, if I went around, if I would have said, do you believe, do you truly believe that God can send a revival like that Burlington revival? Can God send a revival like the Wells revival that happened back in the 1600s? Can God send revival like some of y'all have experienced in times past when God moved in the church and people got saved, people got right with one another, and then they got right with God, and God blessed, and the church grew. And you could, and if you asked you that question, and you say, well, preacher, I would like to hope so, you might as well forget about revival until our hearts are in the place to receive all that God has to give us, folks. The revival won't happen, and the movement won't happen. We've got to get one accord on it and come to together and plead together. I told you about what I said earlier about how long that church prayed every Monday night for every week of the year for 39 years. He said, yeah, it was hard. That pastor said it got to the point where sometimes there was only a couple people there, but we prayed anyhow. He said until the people got together and it come together 
Folks, they didn't have revival. Oh, they had some meetings, but never. And they had some good meetings, but never like what they experienced. Uh, I'm here to tell you, folks, uh, as I had said before, and I'll just jog your memory, uh, there was a time when I was pastoring uh, on my third church, uh, and we was getting, uh, we was coming together. We prayed uh, every Thursday night or Friday night of that month, uh, week, uh, every week uh, of every month uh, for one solid year, praying that God would send revival. And then finally the time came whenever we were going to have revival. Folks, we only had two nights of preaching. We had five nights of shouting, five nights of God moving, five nights of people getting right with God, uh, people coming up and hugging people's necks and saying, I'm sorry, I want to make things right. Uh, and folks, God blessed, and we had a, a meeting. It took some work. It took some prayer. I am committed. I am committed. God, I said, has entrusted me with the gospel. God has entrusted me with the ministry. Hey, the minister to the lost. See, it's not just my job to get up here and preach the word of God, but to talk to people who are lost and undone and on their way to a devil's hell. Folks, I tell you, it's more important to me that I see a soul come to know Jesus Christ uh, and they get saved from a devil's hell than it is to tell you uh, week in and week out uh, something from that Bible. I'm telling you, we ought to be so searching and so concerned for souls uh, that we can't hardly eat and sleep on our own uh, until we tell someone about Jesus Christ. I am committed to talk to the lost about Jesus Christ. Hey, he's putting my trust in ministry to minister to the saints. I'm here to tell you, if whenever I can, I talk to the lost, uh, but every opportunity I get, uh, I want to help the saints. Uh, I'm talking about the church. Uh, I'm talking about you that sat here tonight. Uh, those that was here this morning, uh, those that will be here Wednesday night and next week, uh, I am committed to, I said, to minister. I'm not talking about preaching now. I said minister to the saints. I try to be there for you. When you need me, I'm telling you, I'm committed. He is putting my trust in ministry to minister to the family. To the family. If any way possible, in any way I can, I want to be a blessing to my family. I'm not talking just about my immediate family, but my extended family. Man, I tell you what a blessing it was whenever we was going through this time with my father-in-law's death. And they came to us and they said, do you need the chaplain to come by the house. Do you need the chaplain to come and talk to the family? My mother-in-law looked at him. She said, we've got five preachers in our family. I think we got it covered. <laughs> Amen. And I tell you, we looked at each other. When it came meal time, we were looking to see who was going to pray first. Man, sometimes we all pray. <laughs> Hey, I'm saying, hey, I, my, I, I, I'm committed to, to minister to my family and be there for my mother-in-law and try to help her and try to show some light uh, on God's will in our lives just like I do with all the others uh, the best that I can. Hey, listen, I'm not, a, I'm not one of these thumping preachers. Uh, every time I get around one of them that I want to tell them how wrong they are. I want to tell them how much I love them and how much I care and how much God cares and try to be a blessing, amen. Sometimes we forget about our own family. We're more worried about our neighbor than we are our family. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. One of these days, we're going to be in heaven. You hear me? We're going to be standing up there beside the right hand of the Father. Amen. I'm the right hand of Christ. How about that? He must be left-handed too, brother. Amen. And we're going to be there. But we're going to see some of our family that's going to walk by at the judgment time. And the, God, and the God of all gods is going to look and say, Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. And you're going to see a loved one. Now, it could be a niece or a nephew. It could be someone in your own close family as your brother or your sister or somebody that gets turned out to hell because you never told them about Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but that's pretty good preaching. I said, I am committed. I am committed. He has put the trust in the ministry in me to minister to those to whom he puts before me. I will therefore commit to it. To whomever God puts before me, I'm here to tell you folks, it does not matter to me 
what the color of their skin is, where they come from this world, what language they speak. If there's some way that I can share Jesus with them, I'm going to. Why? Because I'm committed to do so. What am I committed to? First of all, I'm committed to my God. You hear me? I'm committed to God. Amen. I'm committed to God. I will serve him, and him only will I serve. There shall never be one that come before him. And if anything or anyone gets before him, God forgive me, that's what I say. Sometimes it's real easy in this world that we live in. We might not have a little statue somewhere that we call an idol, but there's things that comes in our lives there's things that comes into our heart. There's things that comes in before our face uh, that we put before God because we think it's important. And by rights, it is important. Uh, but it should never come between you and God because when it does, you have put something before God. Uh, I say tonight, you ought to commit to God that you will serve Him. And Him only will you serve. Amen. I will go where He sends me. Amen. No matter what I have to do to get there, I'll go. I will stay as long as he tells me, and I'll go when he says to go. Now, I'll tell you, it's no embarrassment. The last church I was there, I was only there for two years. And I'm going to be honest with you. We had a good ministry there. So I'm telling you, they was. I was looking back on my notes the other day, and I was looking down through there, and I, I always write down, the services and the date and the time and all that stuff, try to keep from repeating myself so much. We, we have a bad habit of doing that anyway. But I go down, I was going down through there and I was looking back and I was looking back over the last, those two years uh, and I got to count how many times that we didn't have, even have preaching. Oh, we had a service, but there was no preaching going on. Why? Because God moved in uh, and the people got to testifying. People got to shouting. People got to singing songs. Uh, people got to talking about the Bible. People got to doing things. Uh, and I stood back and kept my mouth shut. You say, why? That ain't church. No, that was church. Amen. All them other times we just had a meeting. Now, I'm not saying it can't happen here. I'm not saying it's not happening here. I believe it can happen here. I'm, I, what I'm saying, I'm not looking back on that. What I'm saying is, when God said it was time to go, uh, hey folks, uh, I did not waste time. I did not make, uh, did not let the grass grow on my feet. Uh, I said, God, I'll go. Uh, and God had a plan. Thank God. Hallelujah. God had a plan. Uh, when I came back up here, hallelujah, God said, this is where you need to be. Uh, I am committed. I said, that I'm here for the long haul. You say, well, preacher, you might have had it better. No, you only have it better where God puts you. You hear me? Oh, yeah, it was good there, but it's good here. You hear me? It's real good here. Now, I'm just saying, hey, listen, it's not always about the shout. Oh, no, no, no. It's about God's people coming together with love in their heart, and giving liberty to preach the word of God, and to be able to minister, I say, I am committed to go where he tells me to go. Listen, I'm committed. To, he will, uh, listen, to my God. I, he will be my God, and I shall be his child. Uh, no matter what, I will preach what he tells me and not give in to the will of man. Amen. I'll never forget. I was pastoring one time. There's a couple of ladies came up, and they said, Preacher, we have decided that we would like for you to start teaching and they gave me this book they said we need you to teach this book on Sunday mornings for Sunday school <laughs> I looked at them I said but I appreciate you giving me this book but I said God's done put in my heart what I'm to pray to teach and they said well that's fine but you can do that after you get done with this book you know what I've done I said I need to have a meeting with, with you guys with a couple other people in church you know what I told him? I said, it's time for me to leave. Because when man starts telling me what I'm supposed to be doing and what they think I should be doing, it's time for me to get out of the way. And I'm telling you, it's, it's not, it, it shouldn't be that way. God tells the man of God what to preach. He better preach it or else he'll be in trouble with God. 
Amen. I said, I am committed. I said to my family a while ago, listen, listen to me real close. I'm committed. I am committed to be the husband to my wife until death do we part. I don't want to be a part of that statistic. You hear me? I'm going to be the husband of my life until death do we part. I've made a promise to that. And I am committed to it. And I'll do all that I can and be all that I can to be the husband to her, take care of her, and let her know that there ain't another man in this world. Amen. I always tell her, I said, all them other people, honey, I said, they're not real. I said, I'm the only real man for you. Amen. Now, you can laugh all you want to. I'm sure you should tell your wife the same thing. Amen. I am, listen, I am committed to my family to be a dad to my son and to give him best exact, the best example as being a father figure uh, that I can be. Why? So he can be a father figure that he can be to his children. I'll never forget one time. I'll tell this don't get back. When my son was real little, he watched me open the door to my, for my wife, and I still look the door for my wife unless we got a bunch of stuff in our hands. <laughs> I went out there, Dan opened the door, and it stayed open for 30 minutes before she ever got in. But I, I listen, I opened the door for my wife, and I always tried to teach my son, hey, listen, don't let your wife know what a doorknob is. You open the door for her. And I'll never forget, he was just a little old thing. We had a thing at the church, and there was this little girl there at the church, and she was wanting to stay and play, and her parents left. I told him, I said, I'll bring her home whenever we get done. Because, you know, they, they were out there playing these kids. And it came down, it was just my son and her that was out there. And he, my son, man, he was scared to death of her. She chased him all over the churchyard. He, man, she chased him through the truck fellowship building, through the church building. He ran for, I don't, he must have ran for, for an hour. But when it came time to go, we got to the car. He went over and opened up the car door for her. She looked at him, balled up her fist, and said, he ducked him before she did. <laughs> But you know what? He was learning. He was learning how to be a man. I don't know if he opened the door for his wife now or not. I don't know. That's his business. He's old enough to make a decision himself. And so is she. But what I said is, I am committed to be the best dad that I can be to him. I am committed to be the best grandparent to my grandchildren that I can be. To love them. To provide for them. And to be a godly role model for them. I know he's only two months old, but he likes to preach. I carried him down there today, sat on a rock, put him on my knee. Man, I don't know if he not, he just seen that water move, and he sat there and he looked back and forth. Man, I couldn't. He probably would have sat there all evening long. He sat there and watched that water go by. I gave him a little rod. Of course, he couldn't throw it, so I tried to show him how to throw it in the creek. He said, what in the world? Hey, listen, I'm trying to be a grandparent to him. I told my wife, I said, we throw that rock in there, tried to make a promise one of these days, he, I'll keep doing it until he gets it. But I told him, I said, throw this rock and we make a, make a vow that we'll always come back to this place and throw another rock. So he's only two months old. Before he starts throwing rocks, it'll be a couple of years down the road, amen? So you know I'm going to get him for two years. <laughs> Amen. Well, so I got to hurry. Y'all want to have a party, amen? Hey, so listen, I'm, I'm committed. We're having one, sir. Amen. Listen, now, I'm committed to my church. I said, I'm committed to my church. No, this church wasn't named after me. No, my name's not on the deed. No. Hey, listen, I didn't I didn't put one, uh, one nail in this church. Uh, hey, I don't claim it to be my personal church, but I claim to be a part of this church. And I'm committed to my church, you hear me? I'm committed to, to be faithful to it, amen. I'm committed to support it uh, with my presence and with my money. We're going to get quiet there. I'm committed. I'm committed to pastor it to the best of my ability, to preach to it the only God's word, to love it to, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the agape love that God has put into my heart, to always be there for it. Listen now. If I fail in doing so, I ask God to forgive me. I'm committed. It's my heart's passion to do all within me and my strength to pastor 
this church. Listen, folks, I'm going to be honest with you. Anybody can get up and preach. And I can just get up here and preach. But you know what? I want to try to help you. I want to try to be a blessing to you. I want to minister to you. I want to be there for you. I said I'm committed to my church. I'm not running off looking for anything else. And if anybody calls, don't worry. I might answer the phone, but just to tell them I'm not interested. Why? Because I'm committed to my church. When you're committed, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Amen. Amen. And when things come up and you think, oh my goodness, I can't handle it. Uh, there's something taking place. Hey, listen, you won't run from it. Uh, you'll attack it head on with God as your lead. Uh, and you'll pray over it. And you'll seek God's will. And you'll get the victory over it. In other words, I'm not, I'm not tucking tail and run. Amen. Now, I have shared with you before that commitment is a decision that we make. It is a decision that we make. I have decided to stay faithful to my commitment. You hear me? I have decided to stay faithful to my commitment. I have decided to do my best with all that is within me, with all my heart, my mind, and my soul, and my strength. As I am to love God, I, am, I have decided that I will do a Sunday the same to my commitment. I have decided to fight against anything that comes my way that keeps me from my commitment. Something was to come up tomorrow. And they say, listen, we, we want you to do this or to do that, but in order to do so, you're going to have to compromise with your commitment. I'll say, no. No, thank you. I turned down a job sometime back with GEM, they had come to me and they said, we want you to be our one of our carpenters. We want to put you on a crew. And They were building Fats Cafe down on the coast somewhere. They said, we want you to head it up and we want you to go down there. They said, we're going to pay you this and we're going to give you this and this is what's going to take place. And I looked at them and I said, listen, if I go there, how can I be at church on Wednesday nights? How can I be at church on Sunday?" I said, I've got a church. I'm a pastor. They said, well, you'll have to find someone to take your place. I said, I'm sorry. I'm already committed. I want to be good. It's not about the money. It's not about the money. When I get up here and start begging for money, you might need to ask Brother Jerry to usher me out. Amen. <laughs> I'm just saying. Now, if I get a need and I have a need, that might be a different story. But anyway. I said, I have decided. I have decided that I am committed to that what works best for me. And that's where you got to get. you got to get to the point in your life where you say, you know, this is what's best for me. This is what's best for my family. This is what's best for, but that works best for me. And get committed to it and stick with it to the end. Amen. I like what I said before. God don't give up on me. Why should I give up on him? Why should I give up on what he's given me to do? I need to stay faithful to it. Be committed. But now I must ask, what about you? Are you committed? Or do you need to commit today? There's a song that says, I have decided, I ask Miss Tammy, a while ago, folks, I tell y'all, thank God for that woman. She's very talented. She can play a song on the piano. Somebody can sit and talk to her and ask her a totally different question about something totally different, and she can give you an answer and not miss a beat on that piano. What a blessing. I thought that was a blessing. I'm over there talking to her about, uh, about this song. <laughs> She's playing something else. That song says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Folks, I'm here to tell you, if you have decided that you're going to commit to Jesus and you're going to follow Jesus, uh, don't turn back. Don't turn back. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. My God and Father, as we bow before you here tonight, what a great honor and a blessing it is that we can be committed. Lord, maybe someone's here tonight 
they've had a hard time committing. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd help them tonight that they may commit. Commit fully over to you. Lord, I know without a shadow of a doubt that you'll take care of it all. We trust in you. We believe in you. Tonight I pray thy will be done. And these things I ask in thy name. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. I guess if we're just going back to the back, everybody's invited to come and stay. And uh, I don't know what they've got back there or what they've got planned, but it'll be good. Amen. All right. So we'll see everybody to the back.